Solar flux is a chemical compound that comes in a very finely ground powder form. That powder is then mixed with an evaporative solution to create a paste. The paste is then applied to the back side of the weld to shield it as you weld it, thus preventing the need for argon gas as your primary shielding agent. Works wonders on stainless steel and you've seen it in a couple episodes already. Now, thing is, if you can't get a hold of solar flux, maybe it's not available in your country, maybe it costs too much to get into your country, or maybe you just can't even locate it at all, or maybe you don't even need that much. You need to do what a guy called Javier did down in Guatemala. He took the flux off of a piece of 308L rod for arc welding, mixed it up, then applied it to his weld. Then he got a hold of me and said, you've got to try this out because it might actually work. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to test out the flux on a piece of 308L and see if it will substitute solar flux. Let's get on it. Now the very simple theory on this one is that a 308L electrode for stick welding uh, is obviously coated with flux. So why can't you just bang that stuff off of there, mix it up with an evaporative solution and spread it out on your part? Well, actually there's really nothing saying that you can't and uh, I'm kind of blown away that nobody's ever really thought of this before. So for the purpose of control here, let's actually just weld this and uh, show you guys kind of what that looks like. So I'll take a couple of coupons here these together now everybody's got a bet going because uh, this is literally like the maybe fourth or fifth time that I've ever welded stainless uh, with a stick welder or arc welded stainless so uh, let's get ourselves a nice little uh, little opening there we'll do kind of like an open root here see if I can set this up here now there's a bet going on saying that I'm gonna stick this on the first try so let's just see if I can remember how the heck to do this stuff oh Man, they were right. I'm losing money. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Piece of cake. It's like riding a bike. It'll come right back to you. Let's see if I get this one right. Oh, yeah. See? No problem. I got this. Here we go. Now, perhaps a word of the wise to anybody who is going to take a bet with their camera crew. And eh, maybe you should practice first, because <laughs> it's been a while since I did it. So that uh, two goofs there literally cost me 40 bucks. But you know what? I got them back. Watch this electrode. Foof, right there. Choke on your $40. Ooh, wee, look at that. Nice little slag peel on that one. Now, I know that stainless really uh, tends to like to peel off a little bit easier than most anyway. So, uh, you know, I'm still just going to take it because... Yeah, that's like the fourth or fifth time I've ever welded stainless on sticks. So, yeah, I'll take that peel. That's all mine. But either way, <laughs> we have a piece of slag here. We've got something that we can actually compare it to. And, of course, it shows you how it basically keeps everything nice and protected, keeping the stainless stainless as you weld it. So I'm going to set this one aside and let's move on. All right, this is some good old-fashioned rubbing alcohol. Son of a... Oof. Remember that cut you got on your hand a week ago? Me neither. But alcohol remembers. Yeah, I can't seem to catch a break on this episode, but either way, cleaning off the table to prevent any kind of cross-contamination, break out a 308L rod and some solar flux, and we'll compare the two. But if you're anything like me, you might be thinking, sped up sounds are actually kind of funny. And sometimes kind of obnoxious. So let's just turn that one off there. Now, I got to bust it off of there. I just, you can basically take a, you know, hammer or whatever the case is. I took a, a piece of round bar stock and, uh, you know, cleaned it all up there. I busted it off of there. Now I'm going to take it and flatten it all out and grind it down into a, a powder-like consistency here. So nothing more than a piece of uh, flat bar to do that. Brush it all up into a big pile here. Kind of get it as organized as, uh, as possible or as much as I can here. And uh, then we'll actually compare the two of them and kind of give them a side-by-side -side of about what each one of them is like. So start with the solar flux, kind of mix it up here. Now we had this in the back purging episode, so if you want to know more about solar flux, go ahead and check that out. But the idea is to get the right consistency out of it, which is kind of like mud. And when you lay it down, this is what it should look like. Now the idea here is I'm going to see if I can get both of these to run the exact same consistency. Now I'm going to clean off my brush, make sure that there's no cross-contamination or any way that one can affect the other or anything like that. 
started mixing it up here and I was having some difficulties. It was kind of clumpy. It was a lot like, um, I don't know, like wet play sand. It just wasn't, wasn't coming out right. This is, uh, this doesn't seem to be working. Maybe I need to give it a little bit more grind. Now, I really didn't inquire as to, you know, exactly how it was set up or anything like that. I kind of wanted to discover it myself, just the same as anybody else would, so I didn't really ask Javier how he did all of it. I'm really just shooting from the hip on this one. So I figured, hey, maybe there was a little bit finer consistency to get it to just right. So I'm basically just going to do that. I'm going to keep on rolling it over and over and over again until I have it just right. I want to make sure that the consistency is better. And after rolling it several times, it came out a lot finer. And then we give it another test here. I can start mixing it up, let it run around, do its thing. Looks like it's wetting out pretty good. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, got it figured out. Lots and lots of grinding of the flux. That, will, uh, that should help solve it. So we got this far. Now we need to put this on some stainless. We're going to take a couple of uh, coupons here. I'm going to use the exact same two coupons. We'll set these up. Put some solar flux here, some, uh, well, homemade flux on this side, and uh, maybe we'll do a couple more and uh, go from there. Now, getting the right consistency on this stuff is actually really key. So it's got to be a little bit more runny than solar flux to apply just the same as solar flux does. So it takes a little bit of practice uh, to get it just right, but make sure it's heavily coated, nice and thick. That's ideally what you need to do with this one, or at least that's how I found it. So we'll do a quick comparison of the solar flux. You see how easy that goes on versus the 308 flux. But hey, only the test will tell to find out if this stuff actually works. So... I'm not too concerned about how the weld looks on top. Forget about all that. I'm blasting 80 thousandths thick uh, stainless with 80 amps, which is pretty overkill. I just want to make sure that it blows through and the flux does its job on the opposite side. That's all I care. So 10 dabs on each coupon. Let's check it out. Here's the top. These are pretty uh, similar. It looks like I got some solar flux uh, sucked into there. That's, uh, that's pretty interesting. We're on the, uh, on the 308 flux. I, I didn't seem to get any sucked in. We'll turn it over here. Wow. Oh, it's crackling. Hold on. Let me let me sit back here because that's uh that's firing off of there. It's very typical of 308 from my understanding, is that it uh, it likes to go flying. I'm gonna kind of watch my eyes here and I'm gonna let this one cool down and let it do its thing, and then we'll uh we'll peel that stuff off of there and uh see what it looks like underneath because I, I don't want to be around this without safety glasses on. Okay, so we've cooled off a little bit. I can actually touch it now. Uh, like I said, the welds on the top, you know, they, they look pretty uniform. They're good, but, uh, you know, I was pretty hot. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I, I warped it after all. The uh, reason behind that, I was more, you know, interested in getting through to the other side and letting the flux do its job than I was about making a pretty weld on top. So you know, that's actually pretty typical anyway. But let's just try to clean some of this off here. We'll scrape off the solar flux. Very typical. I mean, it's a it's kind of a glassy like structure that's on the top of it, or like a little uh, kind of encased onto it. Uh, the thing about that is you can't really chip it off. In fact, I've never really tried. Yeah, solar flux doesn't exactly chip. You know, we we use this stuff on exhaust systems all the time, and as long as it's not like pre-catalytic converter, I mean, you can send it on down the line. It'll just blow it out of there if it needs to uh, if it needs to evacuate. So let's check the 308 here. Uh, that's pretty impressive. If you look at it really carefully here, you can see that there's not a whole lot of uh, sugaring. In fact, there's almost no sugaring here, but the flux did stick to it, uh, almost like it looks like sugaring. That's kind of weird, but you can definitely see past it, and uh, yeah, without a doubt, there's there's definitely no sugaring on that. I can I can chip off some of this slag here. I can definitely uh, let's see if I got something. Yeah, it's it's coming off. <laughs> it's almost like that glass structure. I'm sure if I had something a little heavier than just a wire brush here, I could bust all of that off of there and we'd have a perfect weld here. So just by comparison, let's just stick it down here with some uh, couple pieces of slag. Have you have a look at that. That's pretty impressive. And you know, I almost want to be like completely shocked and surprised by this, but at the same time, I'm like, that's a no-brainer. Like, why couldn't you take the flux and bust it off of some 308L and uh, 
mix it up and use it the exact same way. I mean, it's kind of flux at the same time, but the discovery here that it actually works, uh, you know, is pretty awesome. So big shout out to Javier down in Guatemala because he's the guy who brought all of this to our attention to make this episode and help you guys out. So big shout out to him. Now, I'm going to throw in just a little bit of a, uh, a, you know, just kind of something to address on this one. Uh, it doesn't mix the same as Solar Flux did. It takes a little bit of uh, kind of tweaking. You got to get it just right to get that formula right, and you got to get it in there just right. Otherwise, it won't work. It won't get some fantastic coverage. But, you know, a little time, a little working with it, whatever the case is, maybe bust out two rods or divide that pile in half, whatever the case is. Make sure it's nice and finely ground, and uh, it should work pretty well, just the same as the results that we got here. And that's, again, that's really awesome. Kind of a no-brainer, but at this, you know, at this time, it's like 20 bucks for a pound of 308 rods from like Blue Demon, for example. And uh, you know that that pound of it is like half the the cost of Solar Flux, and and that'll probably get you pretty far. So, either way you slice it, that's really awesome. Big shout out to Javier. Give that guy a shout out down in the comments below for bringing this episode into uh, into your, uh, your your household and your knowledge base and all the rest of that stuff. Because without him, we wouldn't have done it. Either way, that's going to wrap it up for this episode, and I want to thank you guys for watching. Now, if you need to get in contact with us, just like Javier did, you need to uh, head over to Instagram at the.fabricator, facebook.com slash series, or you can email us on the fabricationseries.com website. So, I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you guys on the next episode.